Hey guys, welcome on in. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do these four basic yoga poses in a healthy and safe way so you do not injure yourself while advancing in your yoga practice. We will be going over Sukhasana, which is easy pose, Baddha Konasana, Butterfly or Bound Angle Pose, Dandasana, Staff Pose, and Balasana, Child's Pose. These are four great grounding yoga poses that are great for warming and stabilizing the breath and body when beginning your yoga practice. Learning these correctly is a great way to begin your yoga journey from the ground up. going into Sukhasana, okay? I did talk about this briefly in our first yoga sequence. Uh, so if you have a blanket or a towel, go ahead and grab it. Uh, maybe two blankets or two towels just like this and fold it up pretty nicely. Um, I usually use just one blanket. So I have two here. So you can stack two like that to get a higher level. Um, or you can just take one blanket and make it shorter by stacking it like that. Um, so Sukhasana is easy pose. So we sit cross-legged, crisscross applesauce. I like to put one foot in front of the other. If I stack my ankles, it kind of is uncomfortable for me. It doesn't feel good on my knees. Um, this is really any pose, any cross-legged pose that feels comfortable to you and you can get into it with ease, okay? So for me, it's one in front of the other, just like this. And uh, so the pose is a meditation pose. You want to be able to straighten your spine, lift your chest, draw your shoulders back, and just relax in the pose. While you do that, you want to have a forward tilt of the pelvis. And this might be hard for some people, so that's where the blanket comes in handy. Um, but if you can do it on the ground, that's awesome. I would move the, the fat beneath your sitting bones away so you sit directly on the bones and just forward tilt of the pelvis. This may put a little bit of strain on your lower back here. So that's where the blanket comes in handy. So you wanna sit on top of the blanket, right on the edge of the blanket. That allows to get that forward tilt of the pelvis without forcing the pelvis forward. So just gently forward tilt of the pelvis in your Sukhasana cross-legged pose. By sitting on a blanket, one or two stacked upon each other, um, also allows easier uh, posture for you to straighten your back and lift your spine and put your hands, just rest them on your knees. You can have your palms facing up to receive that energy or facing down to ground that energy into the earth. And this is a really awesome meditation pose that you can do to start off your sequence or start off your day. Just come into this pose and just relax. So, Sukhasana is derived from two words. Suk, feeling of joy, pleasure or happiness, and asana, posture. So, uh, Sukhasana comes together as a comfortable seat. Uh, the benefits of this is it gradually strengthens the muscles of the low back and improves body posture, right? Because you're forward tilting of the pelvis. Um, you might feel some strain in your lower back, but you also want to lift your spine and draw your shoulders back so you have that straight spine and not a hunched over spine like we always want to sit. Now, you may want to avoid doing Sukhasana uh, this exact way if you have knee injuries or um, so 
severe knee pain or lower back pain. Next, we're gonna talk about Baddha Konasana. I call this butterfly pose. It's what I grew up with, um, but it is also called bound angle pose. Baddha meaning bound angle and asana meaning pose. So Baddha Konasana bound angle pose. Um, so how we get into this is you can again use the blanket if you need to, if that feels comfortable, to raise uh, your bottom up from the ground. Uh, but it's similar to Sukhasana, but you're not crossing your legs. You are putting your feet together and spreading your knees wide. And this may be hard for people with bad knees or hip gr or growing pains. So after you bring your feet together, it's okay if your knees don't want to go so far. The goal is this, after you practice for a long time, you want your knees to eventually touch the ground, but I know that's not accessible for everybody. So, uh, you'll bring your feet together and you want them to just fall open like an open book, if that feels comfortable. You can wrap your hands around your feet, but in this posture, you want to straighten that spine like always and lift your chest to pull your shoulders out from your ears, touch your toes, touch your feet, whatever feels comfortable, keeping that back straight. Forward tilt of the pelvis always helps. Now, like I said, if you're having growing pain here, you can always take blocks and place them under your knees or blankets also do the trick. This is actually really comfortable. It gives really nice support here. So lift your spine, straighten, or lift your chest, straighten your spine. Inhale, and when you exhale, you want to slowly bend forward as far as you can go. You don't have to go all the way to the ground, um, but just as far as you feel comfortable. This is Baddha Konasana. Baddha Konasana is a great pose to do for a nice hip opening stretch, a nice relaxing lower back stretch. The benefits of Baddha Konasana is that it strengthens and improves your flexibility in your inner thighs and your groins and the knees. It helps to soothe menstrual discomfort and digestive complaints. Um, it also may be good for uh, menopause as well. Helps open up the lower back, right? When you bend over, it opens up that lower back and gives it a nice stretch and relieves sciatica. It may be better to avoid the sasana if you have any knee injuries. Um, like I mentioned, you can use blankets or blocks to prop the knees up. Uh, you can always adjust where your feet are. So you, an advanced uh, pose for this one would be to bring your feet all the way in and stretch forward. But that is really tough on some knees and growing and inner thighs. So it may be easier to push them farther out and that may be easier on your knees and your growings with some blocks. I love the blocks. It gives it such nice support. Next, we're going into Dandasana. So remove the blocks from Baddha Konasana. Again, you can use the blanket if you want. Uh, I always like to sit on the very edge of the blanket. It just allows for that nice tilt of the pelvis. Dandasana is staff pose. So with your feet out in front of you, um, sitting on the very edge of the blanket, if this is comfortable or you don't have to sit on the blanket at all, having that forward tilt of the pelvis. If you guys can notice that it's just a subtle movement in the forward tilt of the pelvis. I love this pose. It creates so much energy. You're grounding with your sitting bones here and your legs are just sending energy through and out through your feet. Um, kind of like as if you were standing in mountain pose, Tadasana. So uh, you wanna act like you're standing on the ground, right? With your feet flat, you wanna pull up through your shins and through your kneecaps and your thighs here having that inward, slight inward spiral of your thighs, just slightly. And um, if this is too much for you, I know a lot of people can't straighten their legs, so that's where the second blanket comes in handy. You'll grab over here the second blanket, put it under your knees. You can roll it up even. It'll be better if you roll it up 
place it under your knees. So it gives your knees support, especially if you have, to have bad knees, it gives your knees support and it helps where you don't have to strain your legs as hard. So we got the legs down where we pull through all the muscles. We have the forward tilt of the pelvis. With your hands, you wanna place them down beside your bottom and lift your chest, pulling your shoulder blades back. This is a little strenuous on the lower back muscles back here. So do it to the best of your ability. It may be better if you even bend your knees more, which is perfectly fine. I understand that at first you're definitely not gonna be able to do the full expression as a beginner. So if you need to bend your knees more, stack blankets here, whatever you need to do to feel comfortable in this pose so that you can get into it safely. So straighten your spine, lift your chest, pulling your shoulders away from your ears. This is Don Dasana, staff pose. So Don means staff or stick and asana means pose. I love this pose. It's a really awesome pose to prepare you for uh, standing poses, balancing poses, and it sends a lot of energy through your body by pushing down into the earth. So benefits of Don Dasana is that it improves your posture, right? Again, we're not hunched over, that's unhealthy. You wanna be pu pushing through the ground, pushing your sitting bones into the earth, giving that nice energy and pulling up through that chest. Gives it a nice straight spine, lifting your chest, pulling your shoulders back, gives it, it improves your posture. It strengthens your back muscles. If you are doing this at the very moment, do you feel that strain in your back muscles? The more you do this pose, the more you do Sukhasana um, and also butterfly, it all works on these back muscles, the lower back muscles. So um, it strengthens those back muscles. It also lengthens and straightens the spine, stretches the shoulders, you're pulling back, you're stretching the shoulders and your chest. It nourishes your body's resistance to back and hip injuries. It creates body awareness. I really like that one. So creating body awareness. If you're in this pose right now, it's hard to hold it, right? It's hard to hold it for a long amount of time. So you're being aware of your body. You're being aware of where it hurts. You're being aware of how it feels on your back. So it creates that body awareness, which is very important in yoga. It helps improve alignment of body and provides a mild stretch in your hamstrings. So if you're, you can't straighten your legs all the way, definitely bend them always helps, but you still get that stretch in your hamstrings. You may want to avoid this pose if you have a lower back injury. This may be really hard on your lower back to help that bring more blankets up here to give that support. The more I bend my knees, but still keeping my feet flexed, I don't feel as much strenuous back here, but you have to also pay attention to still lifting your chest. And also you may want to avoid this pose if you have a wrist joint injury, because you're kind of pushing into the ground here with your wrists, your wrists are at a bent angle, and if that is too much on your wrist, you may want to avoid doing this pose. Or just modifying it. So for the lower back injury, you can modify it by pulling your knees up. For a wrist injury, you can modify it by putting blocks here, so it, or books, or whatever. You can stack them, and if you use your elbows, that would give you the same uh, Feeling. Instead of putting that weight on your wrists by going like this, you can put it on your elbows, on blocks. All right, for our last pose today, we are doing Balasana, which is child's pose. So go ahead and move the blankets out of the way. Balasana is such a wonderful pose, guys. It is such a nice stretching pose, relaxing pose, grounding pose into the earth. Um, you can also use blankets and props here if you need to. So go ahead, put your knees and feet together, uh, untuck 
like your feet, spread your knees about the hip or about the mat's width distance. So spread your knees, the mat's width distance, toes together, and sit back on your heels. This is the full expression of child's pose with your forehead on the mat. Stretching your arms out in front of you. So some of you may not be able to sit all the way on your heels. Here are the blankets that come in handy. So maybe the ground is hurting your ankle right here. So set a blanket under your heel or under your ankles, okay? Keeping those toes together that supports your ankles. But let's say you can't put your bot your bottom to your feet. Take another blanket. Fold it and put it under your bottom in between your bottom and your heels and sit back on that. That gives it a little bit of leverage that you can rest on the blanket and it helps you go more forward. I love this pose. Um if you can't touch your forehead to the mat, you can always put a block here and just reach forward as much as you can. Also, if this is hurting to spread your knees out this wide, bring them in closer. Whatever makes this pose accessible to you is what's important, but you do need to make sure that you're doing it the correct way so you do not injure yourself. So this is a very great modification without any props, this is the full expression. Oh, it feels so good. So bala means child and asana means posture. The benefits of this stretch, it helps relieve fatigue. It helps relax the body and the mind. So it helps relieve that tiredness, right? So let's say you have a long day at work and you just need to relax. Go into Balasana, go into child's pose and just sit there, just relax, just clear your thoughts, have your forehead on the mat and really connect with the earth and send that energy to the earth and receive the energy from the earth. It's a grounding pose through your forehead. It's really awesome and you can just even like Shake your head no and let your forehead roll on the mat. It feels really nice and it really relaxes your mind. Or you just had a really um, fit yoga practice where you are just so tired. And I love ending yoga practices in a child's pose. It feels amazing. It's a resting pose and it has a really nice stretch on the lower back. Also, the regulated breathing helps restore you to a state of calmness. So when you're in child's pose, it's a resting pose. You want to kind of get back to that steady breath. And when you concentrate on that steady breath, it brings you back to a state of calmness. The pose also helps to lengthen and stretch out the spine. So you're really reaching over. You're really stretching that spine. It feels so good. And it stimulates digestion. It also helps ease neck bad back pain just stretch that back out right even with the neck it really stretches that neck out it feels so amazing you may want to avoid doing child's pose if you're pregnant this may be a little tough if you have a belly in the front and also if you have knee injuries thank you everyone for watching this video I hope it was of great information to you my goal is with this is to go from the ground up and work through poses of working from the ground all the way up to standing poses and then we'll put them all together in the end and create a beautiful energizing sequence and this will be great for beginners who want to learn the names of the poses and how to do the poses I know how it is being a beginner and you are just so intimidated by not knowing the names or how to do the poses and you're worried if the it, that you can't do the poses don't worry about that with me I will work with you and give you tons of modifications and ways that every single body will be able to do these poses. 
Please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And also, go join my Facebook group where there are awesome informational things that I post on there and we can talk as a community of awesome yogis. Also, make sure to keep track of where we'll be next by following our other YouTube channel, Rockin' and Roman. See you next time.